What's up, everybody? It's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio One Tutorials. Pick up your premium membership. It's 50 cents a day. And don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com. That's where we're housing all of our kits from now on. And get yourself a copy of Take Key Theta Weights. Um, today, we're going to be going into an arrangement method, which I'm coined, and I'm going to be doing a lot more tutorials on it. It's called the ABC arrangement. The reason why I call it ABC is because it is easy as your ABCs, and it focuses around creating three patterns, which then you can build off of and multiply and rearrange to create simple, effective, yet complex arrangements in any genre. Let's take a look. Alright everybody, so a quick word before we get started on the ABCs of arrangement. Uh, when you sign up to Studio12Tutorials.com, you get instant access to the premium subscriber Dropbox where we have um, the YouTube tutorial files that you can find within these um within these videos that i've been uploading to youtube and they're a fantastic resource because um you know if you're if you're in the type beat world or you need a you know you need a little boost in creativity uh these midi files take they take care of the drum work for you they take care of the 808 you can then use follow chords to um you know to go ahead and have and have another like supplementary um product uh similar to 808 uh similar to 808 plug and play you know here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen you know that's that's 17 different 808 patterns um the hi-hat patterns kick patterns and that that's just in the in the youtube session um when you get into the lesson MIDI files, this is this is everything uh, the same type of situation. And these actually have the melodies and the chord progressions. So for you guys who are wanting uh, more MIDI products, it's just 50 cents a day away. Now, I was going through, um, you know, tr trying to get into what tutorials I was going to do this week. And I was looking at my template, seeing more, more and more people wanting to see information on arrangement. And then I was looking at what I had and I was like, oh my God, there it is. The ABCs of arrangement, right? So anytime I, I go into this in the future where this is going to be dubbed the ABC method, why the ABC method? Because the way that I structure trap arrangements is based off of an eight bar hook and a 12 bar verse, right? Now my 12 bar verse, each, each, uh, you know, each four bar pattern, I label verse A, verse B and verse C. Why do I do this? The reason why I do it is because it, a, B, and C represents a subtle change from one pattern to the next. Now, if you notice, you'll see that I'm using I'm using a sample. Um, this is uh, this is kind of inspired by by Madlib and uh, and the Bandana Project, just like a trapped out version, you know, because it's Studio One Tutorials and CMP, baby. But the thing is, is that um, you know this th this can apply to you you know you using splice loops or whatever this uh this sample that i chopped and then and then rebounced it's a simple four bar sample 
and it's not changing throughout the track. But as illustrated by playing this back earlier, is there's plenty of changes to make this interesting. So the way that I set up my templates, and you guys, I suggest you do this um, yourself uh, to make arranging just so much easier, is I will have, if you click this box right here, it looks like a little Tetris piece, you'll pull up the arrangement, the arranger track, and then you can just, you know, double click in the timeline, uh, make the blocks as long as you'd like them to be, and then uh, right click on them, rename them to whatever you want. So I have mines uh, labeled hook A, hook B. The reason why is because when I do my hooks, typically the two patterns will differ in some slight way. In this example, I have just my 808 playing without the kick for the first part of the hook. And then the second part of the hook, I bring the kick in. So it's not a huge change, but it's a subtle enough change, especially when you're messing with the energy in the low end because it takes up so much um, of the frequency range and, and such a such an important part of the frequency range. Um, you can tell that it's just th that it's even though it's a subtle change, it's a huge change in energy and feeling. Um, so when I so when I go through the 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 next part is the you know these are kind of all the patterns built onto each other uh verse a i start taking things away in, in this particular one right so i've taken away my 808 i've taken away my kick i've taken away the snare i've replaced the snare with um with a vocal chop that i went ahead and just laid out on you know on the track by itself in this in, in the verse and i changed the hi-hat a little bit there's a there's this there's this long roll that occurs here. This second part. Oh, and another thing that I've done is I've is I've changed the pitch of the sample. I dropped it down a full octave. Right. So you have this versus this. And I didn't use halftime or gross speed in this instance. I just chose to shift it down an octave because I just. I wanted, you know, I wanted the octave to change, but I didn't want to stretch or mess with the timing. And that that is always an option to you. Like if you want a if you know, if you want that pitch down feel, you don't always have to reach for a halftime or a gross beat. You can simply take the sample and transpose it. And sometimes that'll work out um, better in the overall sound and vibe of the track. Um, the second the second uh, verse B, we went ahead and brought the pitch back up and we just mess with the drums a little bit. If if I wouldn't have done this, these this drum pattern would have been the exact same uh, drum pattern as hook B. And that's what you don't want. You you don't want, you know, the exact same patterns to duplicate. You want your beat to be predictable to a point, uh, because if you increase predictability in your beat, you get to a point where people will will be able to guess what's coming next and that is the psychology of somebody pressing uh the next button um you know on their computer or or on their phone they're not going to want to hear anything else if if they feel like it's predictable and they can figure it out um this the second verse see i'm using um i'm using a plugin that i'm going to talk about later this week to create uh stutters in the sample So again, a, it, and, and the drum pattern is very similar to hook B, but you see we took the hi-hats out here. So that is, um, you know, that is allowing for enough um, variation in the hi-hat pattern to create that subtle difference. Um, this mentality, it it, it it's fractal it it repeats itself in every decision that you make so now when i go to when i go to finish out the rest of the song what i'm going to do is i'm going to take is i'm going to take hook b and i'm going to repeat it here and even though you know this might you know you might think well like well, what did you just say about predictability dude like that doesn't uh you, you know is isn't this going to be predictable by repeating the patterns the thing is is uh you know when i say that it's fractal and everything repeats itself when you know when i went ahead and designed this hook when you know when you hear when you hear the end of the verse and you're expecting that you know the vocalist is going to put their hook here um 
this this hook now becomes different from the first one right so this so these so now we're thinking in multiples these whole two patterns are different and to continue that spirit now i can take and you know hold down alt drag this over here and i'll start with verse c and I'll move in to verse B and then go into verse A. So now not only not only not only do we have different patterns working against each other, we have a different arrangement of the patterns working working into each other. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to bring over hook B and then I will bring over hook A. So now, you know, we'll still flow into each other. And that little and that little change will bring the beat to life even more. So um, this this ABC method, I think this is the easiest, most straightforward method uh, using Studio One 4.5 and the Arranger track really helps out. The Arranger track is available in version Studio One 3 all the way up to Studio One 4.5. But this is CMP with Craftmaster Productions, Studio One Tutorials and CMPKits.com. I want you guys to keep it simple, but do not be basic and we will see you on the next one fam.